Well, good morning. Welcome to Kinole Baptist Church. And if you are tuned in on Facebook live, thanks for joining us. We're going to begin with song this morning. Song Hosanna, Praise is Rising.
seated. Well, once again, good morning. Welcome to Kinole Baptist Church, and thank you so much for tuning in online via Facebook Live. I want to put this uh, on the screen just to remind you what today is. It's Palm Sunday, and uh, today is Palm Sunday, which makes Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem, or Mark's, sorry, Mark's, Jesus' uh, triumphal entry into Jerusalem. It is also the beginning of Holy Week, or uh, Passion Week. Um, so yeah, today's a really important day uh, for us as believers. In fact, after this triumphal uh, entry into Jerusalem, Jesus would be crucified only five days later. So uh, we want to remind you that we are on uh, social media, Kinole Baptist Church on Facebook, Kinole Baptist on Instagram, and Kibach Media Ministry uh, on YouTube. Also, you can find out what's going on at kinoolebaptist.com. Uh, we want to highlight that on our webpage, we do have the Good Friday service link now available for you, and we're just going to simply play our service video from last year, uh, Good Friday, and uh, you can feel free to tune in and partake in the Lord's Supper uh, via that Good Friday service link. Um, also on the website, the Easter virtual service for next week will be available at 8 a.m. on Sunday morning next week for Easter Sunday. And uh, the Annie Armstrong Easter offering um, link is there as well that will take you to that home page if you want to find more about the Annie Armstrong Easter offering. Um, if you're here, uh, make sure you keep your masks on at all times and as far as bathrooms go, um, one at a time. So if the door is closed, it's occupied. When you're finished, leave it open and you can uh, mount the social distancing hash marks on the ground if you are waiting in line. I want to remind you that we do have an overflow room that is currently playing the audio of our, uh, for our services. So um, if you would like to check that out, you can feel free to go to room one. Um, Ask an usher at the back of the auditorium. Well, we have a trivia question for you, and it's uh, today's easy trivia. Um, if you grew up in church or been familiar with uh, church uh, and Christianity, these, these, uh, these will come easy to you. Uh, Palm Sunday celebrates Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem riding a what? Is it a donkey, camel, horse, or limousine? Okay, yes, the answer is limousine. Good job. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> just checking if you are uh, paying attention. All right, the answer, the real answer is donkey. Donkey, all right. Um, the bonus question What did people lay on the ground for Jesus and what did it represent? Anyone? Give you a clue it's Palm Sunday. So, what did they lay on the ground? Palm branches, yeah, palm branches. Okay, and what did, the, what did that signif uh, signify, palm branches, uh, historically and culturally back then? Let's put the answer on the screen. Palm branches symbolize victory and triumph. So when they were laying uh, the palm branches on the ground for uh, Jesus to, to come through, um, that's what they were signifying, that that there's victory with Hosanna. And I think Hosanna in Hebrew means save us, right? That's what it means. So it's like they're crying out, save us. This is our Messiah. This is our Savior. Hosanna, God. Okay, that's our trivia question. Our fill in the blank for today comes from John 12, 13. They took blank branches and went out to meet him, shouting blank. All right, so what is that first blank? They took... Palm branches, good, and went out to meet him, shouting, 
Hosanna, good. And if you're on Facebook right now, make sure you leave your answers in the comment section. Uh, blank is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king of blank. All right, so what is that first blank? Blank is he. Blessed, good. And I always get confused with that word, by the way. Is it blessed or blessed? I think both are correct, depending on how you want to say it and depending on what song you sing too, yeah? <laughs> sometimes you need one syllable blessed. Sometimes you need blessed, two syllables. Okay, so blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king of... Israel. Israel is correct. All right. So John 12, 13, they took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king, or blessed, <laughs> is the king of Israel. Man, did I say blessed first and then blessed for the second? Yeah, okay. We have a memory verse, and it comes from Colossians. Now, we need to remember that it's important that as Christians that we're serving others and we're loving others, but that's not our primary reason to exist. Our primary reason is to love God, right, passionately. All that we do, we do it for God. And if in turn we are doing it for people, like that's great. But if that's our primary goal, that's not a good thing, right? We exist to worship and glorify God. That's what this verse is about. We're not doing it for human masters. This is something for us to memorize, but also um, next week we'll have a new memory verse, right, for a new month. Just because this is no longer going to be our memory verse doesn't mean we don't apply it to our lives. This is a pretty key passage for us. It comes from Colossians 3. It says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. Colossians 3, 23 to 24. All right, pretty key passage there. For this month uh, leading up to Easter, we are collecting the Annie Armstrong Easter offering. Uh, once again, as Southern Baptists, we have the largest missionary sending, gospel sharing organization uh, in the North American Mission Board. And, and so we are supporting our missionaries. Uh, feel free to give above your tithe uh, to the Annie Armstrong Easter offering. Um, because of that, because we're highlighting that, we're also highlighting uh, video testimonies of some of these missionaries that we're supporting. So check this out. We had a really good life back in Brazil, a really comfortable life in Brazil. My wife, uh, she was a lawyer for the government, and uh, I was uh, a pastor in my, in my church. And then I visited a friend here in New England. He showed me around, and he showed me people not knowing Jesus. We got over uh, 500,000 Brazilians living in all New England. And then I realized that God was calling us. We took the flight and we landed here in, uh, in Boston. 20 days after this, my wife delivered our daughter. I spoke uh, zero English at that time. It wasn't easy, our beginning here. I had to be strong for my wife and for my daughter. So I didn't give myself this opportunity to give up. And I remember that my first job was working at a Dunkin' Donuts. So I met a few Brazilians there and we started some small groups. And our focus was really specific to reach non-believers and to reach people who, who didn't know Jesus. So basically, my ministry is based on a friendship. And uh, the people who attend the church uh, are your friends. We started like gathering with people and we found a place. And, uh, we started doing Sunday services. When people give, they are really helping uh, some families to thrive and to survive, uh, especially uh, at the beginning of the journey. For me and for my family, it's been uh, uh, vital. What I'm learning is if God called you, He will provide. So feel free to, uh, once again, give above your tithe to the Annie Armstrong Easter offering uh, to support um, these missionaries. We're going to continue in song with this song called The King is Here. For Palm Sunday, uh, Jesus makes his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. And so this is a perfect fitting song. The 
king is here and just our response to him is what the chorus is. The king is here. The king is here. You're alive inside of me. The king is here. The king is here. Love will never, ever leave. We worship, we worship and we praise. We lift your holy name. We rejoice for our king is here. We're living to proclaim. You've opened heaven's gates. We rejoice for our king. God, you are here, you are here, every heart has been set free, we worship and we praise, we lift your holy name, we rejoice for our King. Pastor Daniel up to give the pastoral prayer and the talk for today. Morning, everyone. It's good to welcome you this morning. And for those that are tuning in, we're thankful for your time uh, to join us. You know, the word, there was a little book that was published called Eight Days That Changed Our World, referring to uh, the last week of Jesus' life here before his crucifixion. 
Of course, he was crucified on Friday, buried, raised on Sunday, and then for 40 days, he appeared risen. And uh, next week online, we'll be uh, celebrating with churches all over the world as we celebrate uh, the risen Savior. But 600 years before Jesus came, God wanted to be sure that his people would be ready for the coming Messiah. Through the prophet Isaiah, he shares this prophecy. Isaiah 53, But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. We recognize that this year, these last 13 months, have been extremely difficult for many. We all have suffered isolation, discouragement, maybe even despair, and some are grieving because in this last year they've lost loved ones. And for all of us, we are prayerful. Next month's memory verse also comes from the book of Colossians. Colossians 4, verse 2 will be, Devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. And so as we pray for one another, as we prepare our hearts for some takeaways, for a story that we have perhaps, some are hearing for the very first time. But Jesus brings some lessons on that first day that I believe we need uh, to, to call attention today. As we pray, Holy Father, thank you for your comfort. Your Holy Spirit, your name is Comforter. For indeed, Lord, you provide peace even in the midst of trials and storms. That you bring, Lord, uh, your presence and you, Lord, release your power not only to bring healing, but also to bring joy. And even in the midst of our struggle, we are grateful that we can as the songwriter says, rejoice in the Lord always, for this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. But we pray for your help. You are our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in time of trouble. And so we pray, Lord, that you will provide everything we need. And we ask, Lord, for your uh, presence with us today. Guide us, protect us, lead us, teach us, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This is Palm Sunday. And there was a story about little five-year-old Johnny, who because of a cough, he stayed home with a babysitter. When his family came back from church, they were carrying palm fronds or branches. And so Johnny asked his brothers and sisters, what is this for? And the father said, well, people held them over Jesus' head as he walked by in Jerusalem. And then Johnny said, kind of under his breath, wouldn't you know it? The one Sunday I don't go, Jesus shows up. Jesus shows up. But the Bible teaches us that Christ in us, the hope of glory, that God has deposited as His Holy Spirit to not only bring comfort and help, but to remind us that Jesus is coming again. And that this first death, that one day some or maybe all of us will face before His coming again, is that that death will not be the final death, that that sting of death has been forever removed because of what Christ has done for you and me. 
And so as we look at the last week of Jesus' life before his crucifixion, we would believe that everything that he taught, everything that he did, if you knew that you only had one week, he had three years to instill in his disciples what his presence and power would mean to change their lives. But what would you do? What would you teach? What would you do to help them so that they would be reminded years later perhaps, days and months later, 2,000 years we are still reviewing the same story. And so there are certain takeaways, certain lessons that the Lord would want to leave with us today. And so as I read from Matthew's Gospel, all four Gospel writers record Jesus' entering into Jerusalem. But we'll be looking at the Gospel according to Matthew. And as he relates the story in Matthew chapter 21, as they approached Jerusalem, came to Bethage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her coat by her. Untie them and bring them to me. And if anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was spoken, spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, See your king comes to you gentle, riding on a donkey and on a coat, the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went out and did as Jesus instructed them. They brought the donkey and the coat, placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees, spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, who is this? 2,000 years later, people are still asking you and me, Who is this Jesus? The crowds answered, This is Jesus the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Jesus entered the temple courts, drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the branches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, My house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him at the temple, and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he did, and the children shouting in the temple courts, Hosanna to the Son of David, they were indignant. Do you hear what these children are saying? They asked him. Yes, replied Jesus. Have you never read from the lips of children and infants, you, Lord, have called forth your
Sorry. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Early in the morning, as Jesus was on his way back to the city, he was hungry. Seeing a fig tree by the road, he went up to it, found nothing but leaves. Then he said to it, may you never bear fruit again. Immediately the tree withered. When the disciples saw this, they were amazed. When you see God at work, when the miraculous is occurring, do you make the connection that this is the work of God? Well, let's look at some of the takeaways. For some, perhaps, it would be, as Pastor Carl mentioned, that instead of riding in a limousine, Jesus came on a donkey, not a, a stallion or a steed that the concrete generals or kings would come into the city following a victorious battle, but a, a, a colt or a, a donkey, a beast of burden. Could it be when Jesus said, the Son of Man comes not to be served, but to serve, to offer his life a ransom for many? Could it be that the takeaway is that we who choose to follow Jesus needs to also make our lives to be as servants, as we serve and share the Word of God, as we connect as bridge builders to one another, as not only we connect to the Lord Jesus, but we connect with one another, as we do not forsake the assembling of ourselves, but instead we continue to gather in whatever way, whether online or whether in person. Could that be a takeaway? Perhaps also the key question, who is this? The crowds immediately understood that here was Jesus, son of Joseph the carpenter from Galilee. And he was a prophet and spoke and taught. But was he only a prophet? Or have you come to that place where the Bible says that Jesus recalled, uh, uh, stated that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And only through Him and in Him are we able to enjoy not only this life, but the life even greater beyond this. When Steve and Desiree put up the banners, we've been told three weeks after they posted the new banners in our building, that we no longer see it, we no longer read it. And yet, Jesus says, I have come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. Or perhaps we love Him, not because that we love Him, but He first loved us, and we respond to His love. Or could it be the word Hosanna means salvation, or Lord, save us. I did not come to judge the world, Jesus says, but to save it, to offer His life a ransom for many. Could that perhaps be the takeaway when we were able to visit in our nursing homes in our city? When we could speak to the residents, we would often say in comment, why is it that we Christians speak Jesus all the time? Jesus this and Jesus this. Praise Jesus. Why is Jesus mentioned so prominently? For those who are Christ followers. And we would often say that often when God invites us to his big luau in the sky to heaven, he invites us all. But we cannot go to the banquet hall to heaven without the ticket. And we can't buy it at the door because you can't take money with you. You have to buy ahead of time. And the ticket that you buy to get you into heaven is Jesus. And if, in fact, Jesus is the ticket, we often say we talk about Jesus all the time because he is the only way that we can enjoy life to the full now 
and also forever. Jesus is worthy of our praise. Could it also be that sometimes we allow clutter and maybe we forget the reason why God has left you and me here? If heaven is the goal, which it is not, it is the destination, but the goal is to honor Him with our lives. The Bible says we have been bought with a price. So give glory or honor God in your bodies. And so when Jesus went to the temple, he looked around and what he saw bothered him. When he was 12 years old, he was found there in the temple teaching and sharing with the religious leaders. 12 years old. And when his parents says, why did you put us through this? We've been seeking, searching for you everywhere. Jesus says, did you not know that I am about my father's business? That the temple is the place where people encounter God. And when Jesus went that day and saw clutter, and the temple courts was filled with the sacrifices, and the buying and selling. And Jesus reminded them, Do you not know that my Father's house is a place of prayer? Why prayer? What is it about prayer that is so precious to God that He would store the prayers of the saints in golden bowls, the Bible says? Not to inform God, that's not what prayer does because God already knows what's on our hearts and what we need. Then what is the posture of prayer? It is faith. It is trusting God for that which we need. We are so needy. And God wants out of the cries of our hearts to hear that we need Him. We need His help. God is able to do immeasurably more than we can even ask. But He wants us to ask because it shows to Him how much we need. Could that perhaps be why Jesus cleansed the temple twice, not just once? All four gospel writers record the cleansing, but also records that it happened at the beginning of His three-year ministry and at the very close, again, perhaps you and I allow clutter. We get distracted. The cares of the world, Jesus told the story that it was like a farmer went out and some seed fell on the rocky ground. There was no root. And so when the sun came up, it dried out because there was no substance or there was no faith. Jesus was explaining that some of us perhaps have lost faith. We perhaps are just questioning God. God, why? And as we've heard it said, blessing does not come without the burn. Sometimes God allows the fire to refine our faith. To strengthen our faith. To cause us to cry out, God, help us, save us. We need Jesus every hour. But why the cursing of the fig tree? If you only had one week, what would that, that, that exercise do? Why was it so important? Maybe Jesus was hungry, that's true. And maybe Jesus already knew that all there was on a, in a time when it was not the season for fig trees to fruit. Jesus knew that. But when he went, he saw the leaves. No fruit. Could it be that Jesus was leaving a reminder that man looks at the outward appearance. God always looks at the heart. And it's not just faithfulness that God looks for in His people, but also fruitfulness. 
And when we are not bearing fruit, when we go out into the world to be a witness, to be a representative of Him, ought we not to display Jesus shows up in my life and the fruit of His Spirit in your life and mine? Ought that not to be that Christ followers, the more we get to know Jesus, the more we get to love Him. And the more we get to love Him, the more He shows up. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Are these more evident in your life? It ought to be. And maybe there's a faulty connection or a loose connection. Or maybe, perhaps, we have gotten distracted because we are immersed in a world that still have not come to recognize Jesus is the answer. Could that perhaps be? This year, 1946, is a very important year for our church. Because on November 17, 1946, just after World War II, when Christian missionaries, Baptist missionaries, were being kicked out of China because China had determined that they wanted to sever their ties with the Western world. And so all of the missionaries from the United States, they wanted out. And as they made their way home to the mainland to return to their homes and to their loved ones, they discovered here in the islands that there were people that needed Jesus. And there were those that came on every major island. And there were missionaries that came to Hilo in 1946 so that on November 17, 1946, 75 years ago, 18 Christ followers covenant with each other and with God made a promise of commitment to be the first Baptist church of the Big Island. They called themselves then, we called ourselves then, Hilo Baptist Church. We were the first. But then, as God established more and more Baptist churches here on the island, today, 75 years later, there are 18 Baptist churches that we affiliate with here on the Big Island. But soon thereafter, we changed our names. We are no longer the Hilo Baptist Church because we were not only the, the only ones, so we called ourselves, as our location, the Kinoole Baptist Church. But you see, you and I are the recipients of that commitment. And it is, in fact, what has been passed on to you and me to continue that commitment with God and with one another as members of the Kinole Baptist Church. But, and the last takeaway, there will always be opposition to our faith, to our being fruitful. Always opposition. The opposition comes from within. Sometimes we just get tired, do we not? And sometimes just being average may have become good enough to be okay. It is not. The life of Christ is in you and me, needs to be exhibited. But sometimes we offer perhaps a mediocre witness. Sometimes there is very little difference between us who follow Christ and those who do not. And that should not be. Perhaps... We have gotten distracted and we take shortcuts. The Bible says, not by might or by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. That we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. And to wait on the Lord 
sometimes takes patience. Sometimes takes just holding on, fixing our eyes on the one who leads us. Also, perhaps, our faith have pukas. Our faith leaks. That is to be expected in a world that does not exhibit a whole lot of faith in the Lord Jesus. God is counting on you and me to walk by faith, not by sight. To trust in the Lord with all our hearts and not lean on our own understanding. But in all our ways, we are to acknowledge Him and He will keep us on the straight and narrow. That's my paraphrase. Finally, reading from John 15, the key to faith and fruitfulness. As Jesus walked with his disciples on their way to the Garden of Gethsemane as they passed through the Mount of Olives, he taught them one final teaching. I am the true vine. My father is the gardener, John 15. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes us, ouch, so that it will be even more fruitful. Are you sometimes hurting because of the pruning? You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. So remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, Jesus says. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. The last thing Jesus did in the upper room was he washed the disciples' feet. And he told us, he reminded us. He said, I, your Lord and teacher, have washed the feet of my disciples. And you should also wash each other's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. As we pray together, as we prepare our hearts for the response, Ralph Carmichael Jr. penned in the 50s, a song, sounds like a folk song, wasn't received very well in that time. But it has perhaps become very known to, very familiar to us. The Savior is waiting to enter your heart. Why don't you let him come in? There's nothing in this world to keep you apart. What is your answer to him? If you'll take one step toward the Savior, my friend, you'll find his arms open wide. Receive him and all of your darkness will end. Within your heart he'll abide. Time after time he has waited before. And now he is waiting again. To see if you're willing to open the door. Oh, how he wants to come in. As we pray together, Holy Father, may we with open hearts and open arms, as you send us out this week, as we become the inviters to the Good Friday service, 
to the online Easter services as churches everywhere open their doors to proclaim the risen Savior, that you are able to do immeasurably more than we can ever ask or think, because it is your power that gives us everything we need. And so, Lord Jesus, may you find open hearts. May you find willing hearts in your people to be the connectors to those that have yet to respond to your salvation. Oh, Lord, may we be useful for you this week and encourage and invite others to place their trust in you. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Th once again, thank you so much for tuning in uh, on Facebook Live. Thank you for being here today. Um, Palm Sunday. Remember, it's the beginning of Holy Week or Passion Week, so please make sure that this week you contemplate the cross of Christ uh, and His resurrection uh, next week. So Good Friday uh, for that service. Of course, we're not having an in-person service. In fact, we are sharing the link for our virtual service on YouTube from last year. And uh, that can be found on our, uh, our, our website right now. You can find out what's going on at kinoolebaptist.com. Um, and then uh, the Easter link will be available on our website as well uh, on Easter Sunday next week at 8 a.m. So be sure to tune in uh, to that. 
Um, if you are a church member and uh, you want to be in the business meeting uh, for this afternoon, but you didn't get a link, make sure to email Kinole Baptist Church at gmail.com. We have a church member's business meeting today at 1.30. Um, the last announcement is, uh, so next week we are not meeting in person. There will be another church meeting here uh, next week. We'll be meeting via YouTube. Um, but the following week, the week after Easter, we'll be partaking in the Lord's Supper here uh, in person. So be sure to prepare for that as well. Thank you so much for, for being here today, for tuning in online. And uh, we're going to call Pastor Daniel up to close us today. There was a story that was published in Reader's Digest on the mainland, experiencing the ice and the, the storms, uh, the snow. And apparently, it was recorded that a bridge collapsed because of the weight of the snow. Unfortunately, there are many cars that continued to travel on the bridge and fell into the river below. One survivor climbed out of his car and with his body soaking with the icy cold waters, he decided to climb up and to try to prevent the other cars from facing the same fate that he did. But somehow they never noticed him on the side of the road. And so cars continued to fall into the river. He made a decision and this is the takeaway. He decided to go into the middle of the road, plant himself there to stop the cars. The first car came and screeching came to a halt and the driver said, what are you? You are crazy. What are you doing? Just the simple words of warning. The bridge is out. Turn back. Sometimes we have to get out of our comfort zone to get the word out. We may face opposition. We may face unfriendly people. But still the Lord commands you and me, get the word out. May we be his representatives this week. Amen. Father, help us to be the best connectors with you and with those that we meet this week. Lord, we have come to enjoy your presence and the power and the difference you make in our lives. Help us, Lord, to share that life, your life, with those that we meet this week. Help us, Lord, as we go online this coming week, as we join churches everywhere on the planet, as we declare with one voice, He is risen indeed. Help us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you all. Have a great week, everyone. Happy Easter.